Hello and good day. This is Dr. Bev Knox from BevKnox.com and BevKnoxFabulous.com. Today's class is all about dating. It's dating 101. What to do on a date, where to go on a date, how to act, dress, and behave on a date. I am excited to be here today to work with you, to guide you in being your most fabulous self on a date, okay? All right, I've got rules and I've got tons and tons of rules and you guys already know the deal when it comes to me. Before I even talk about what to do on a date, I've got to go over my dating safety and rules with you. Most of you have already taken my class, my online dating class, the do's and don'ts, my rules when dealing with safety and stalking and psychos. I want you to keep in mind that everybody you're going to be going out on a date with may not be of sane mind. I'm not here to scare you. I'm not here to, to make it seem like dating isn't a wonderful thing to do. I'm not here to do that at all. But my key focus when I talk about dating is safety. Safety measures come first, okay? So I'm just gonna go over a few rules before dating, okay? Number one, and I want you to go ahead and get your journal out because you may need to write these rules down. If you've actually uh, registered for my Guide to Fabulous series, you've gotten an ebook with the series, but if you're just taking this course as a separate class in itself, you didn't get the ebook, okay? So go ahead, grab a journal, grab a, a sheet of paper and a pen or pencil, and let's get going, okay? So my rule number one, when you are scheduling a date with someone, I don't care who it is, okay? Do not schedule this date in the same town you live in. I do not want this individual person to know the town you live in, your address, your real phone number, none of that. Let's just get this out of the way. And again, I know I covered this already in, in online dating do's and don'ts, but I want to just, I want to just reiterate one more time, okay? Dating Dating does not mean, dating somebody does not mean that you are going to be serious with that person. They are going to fall in love with you. You are going to fall in love with them. They are of sound mind, just like you are. It does not mean you're going to end up marrying that person. To me, and it should be to you, if you are a serious-minded person that's looking for somebody for a long-term relationship, Dating really is the interviewing process. That's what it is. I mean, if you are if you're young and you just want to, you know, date casually and go out and and have fun with people, I mean, that's a different kind of dating. But what you want, and I know you want this because you bought my you bought my series, you bought my lectures. You want a long-term serious relationship. And if this is the type of relationship you want, I am telling you, do not bring anybody on your turf when you first begin to date them. You are beautiful. You are gorgeous. You are well-balanced. You are. You are absolutely fabulous. Everybody's going to want to date you. Everybody is going to want to date you. But it doesn't mean you're going to go out with all of them. You are going to be selective and you are going to be picky. If you're getting most of your dates online, and a lot of folks are doing online dating now, and I think it's actually a great way to meet people, to meet qualified people, to weed out a whole bunch of stuff that you wouldn't necessarily have 
been able to weed out if you met somebody, you know, at the, the local bar or restaurant or so forth. You know a lot about that person from their profile if they are being truthful, okay? So I'm going to assume that you met, you know, someone online, a couple people online, and you're ready to actually start the interviewing process, which is going on a few dates, right? I do not want you scheduling dates in your town. I want you to schedule dates at least half an hour away. Do not tell anybody your real name or your real last name. Maybe your, your real first name, but not your last name, okay? Do not give them your real phone number because they could do a reverse lookup and find your address. Okay, I want you to be very, very precautious when you are dealing with strangers because these people are strangers. That's what they are. And safety comes first. Safety comes first. Schedule your date about half an hour from the town you live in. Do not allow anybody to pick you up at your house. You are a big girl now. You got your big girl panties on, right? Nobody needs to pick you up at your house. You could drive yourself to the restaurant or you could get a cab or you could actually have somebody drive you and drop you off. And then when you're ready, call them, call them off and then they come and pick you up. I know this seems a little tacky, okay? But I'm just being real with you because I care about you and I care about what happens to you, okay? All right? We went over stalking in a previous lecture, and we went over dealing with psychos. And I don't want you to have to go through any of that drama. You're in a stage of your life right now where you want to have fun while seeking your life partner. You want to have a good time. And you do not want to have to worry too much about folks stalking you whether it's, you know, at your home, your job, or cyber stock, and it's, it's getting pretty, uh, you know, it's on the rise right now, and you don't want, you don't want that, okay? Okay. I'm here on my ebook, and again, if you've got the ebook, by all means, jump online and pull up uh, the, the chapter on dating, because that's where we are right now. Get your journal handy, because you are going to be doing some journal exercises also, all right? So schedule date at a public location miles away from your home. Two, always let either a family member or friend know exactly where you are going and whom you are going to meet. Let me say it again. Always let somebody know exactly where you're going and who you're going on a date with. And if you do not have any family members or friends, and hopefully after this, <laughs> this uh, lecture series, I've taught you how to establish new positive friendships, but let's just pretend if you don't have any uh, family members or friend, friends, what you are to do is you are to leave, leave, your, leave a note in your house. Okay, uh, on, a, on a sheet of paper, you know, the date I'm going to, you know, so-and-so restaurant in this town with so-and-so. This is their address they gave and their phone number. And you keep it, uh, you know, put it in a, on a, in, a, in a drawer or on your desk and you're at your house. Sure. Safety comes first. Okay. And I don't want you to think, oh my gosh, Bev is just so paranoid. No, 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 no. I have done my research. I have done my research, okay? Again, drive yourself. Never let them pick you up at your house, okay? Four, make sure that you have cash on hand. Make sure you've got a credit card and make sure that there, <laughs> there's available balance on that credit card, okay? And you need cash, at least $100 cash on hand in your, in your wallet, okay? And I'll talk about who pays for what later on uh, in, this, in this lecture. But again, right now, I want you to have cash and a credit card in your wallet just in case. Just in case. All right? All right. All um, right. Whew, now I could breathe. I could breathe, I could breathe, I could breathe, and I could really get into it now. Um, 
in regards to dating, what you do, and so forth. Are, are you ready? Are you ready? What have we covered so far? You've got this, you've got this written down in your journal, right? What was the number one thing I talked about? Go ahead. What was the number one thing? Never what? Never schedule a date in your own town? Yeah, you want to go miles away? Sure, sure. What else? Never tell them your, your, your real last name, your address, your real phone number, right? Your real phone number that you have a paid plan for because your name and address may be attached to it. So you always get a burner phone, you know, a little cheap $9.99, you know, $19.99 prepaid phone because you don't have to attach your real name to the prepaid phone. And that's the phone you want to use when you are talking to these strangers because that's what they are at this point. Okay, sure. Um, you want to drive yourself there. Never let them pick you up at the house. And also you want to have cash and a credit card in your wallet just in case okay just in case you have to just run out of there and you need uh, cash for a cab just in case the dates going really really bad and you you just want to just put your you know your, your, your $30 um, on the table and, and walk out you know or pay your own bill and walk out just in case you want to be able to take care of yourself okay all right Next, next, number five. Woohoo! We are at number five already. I'm going to read it, then I'm going to chat about it, okay? So, number five, look mm, fabulous. It's all about your personal appearance on your first date, okay? Hold on. Dress appropriately for the event or occasion. Be well groomed and polished. First impressions are key. Oh my, oh my. Look at this. Men are highly attracted to beautiful women. Sure, men are visual creatures. Okay, women, we're more emotional, uh, emotion, emotional based creatures. Men are, I'm not saying that we don't like, you know, to watch a, a, a beautiful man or stare at a beautiful man across from us. I'm not saying that. But generally, when it comes to biology, according to research, most men are visual creatures and they like to stare at something um, that is striking, okay? And of course, standards of beauty vary across cultures. We know that, we know that. So whatever your size, your height, you know, your race, ethnicity, whatever, you have to look polished and you have to look your best and you have to dazzle. Let me tell you something, okay? Your physical appearance is just part of your the totality of your of your appearance we know that how you act and how you behave is part of your whole physicality and and makeup okay and we'll get to that in a little bit but first i just want to make sure that you understand that you know first impressions that is key and you do have to look your best on your first date you have to look well polished you have to look like like you are all that and then some okay and you know how to look good. You know how to look good. Because why? Because you've already taken my class on looking fabulous, looking and feeling fabulous. And, you know, if you hadn't for some strange reason, um, if you didn't take that class, I encourage you to take the class on, um, you know, discovering and creating your most fashionable fabulous self okay because that will assist you greatly in your journey to finding your you know your partner um and and on this first date and that's how you find your potential partner um you know a, or a love or, or husband or wife or what have you is by meeting them for the first time and we want to leave a lasting impression in their minds embedded and printed in their minds forever okay forever whether or not the date you know goes good or, or not we still want to live a lasting impression and that impression first comes by your physical appearance how you look okay so dazzle the individual you want to dress appropriately meaning what I mean by that is um, I don't know where you're going to be going for your first date I mean you and your 
pretend you and your date could have arranged something out of the ordinary, okay? Most most dates, you know, it would probably be in a restaurant, a public setting, and that's what I would encourage. Definitely be in a public setting. Never, 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 you know, go on a first date with somebody, um, you know, and in a secluded area where it's just you two or very few people. You do want to go in a highly, um, you know, publicized area with cameras all over the place just in case, okay? Uh, so I don't know where you're going, but if you're going horseback riding, that's very adventurous. I think that's a, that that's great, but you don't want to have a dress on. You know what I mean? You don't have to have you know a, a beautiful, sexy dress on, and you're going horseback riding. If you're doing uh, you know going to the beach, a, you know a beach for the beach for the day with your mate as your first date, you don't want to you know you you want to dress to the occasion. Bottom line, that's it. You want to dress appropriately. So I'm going to, you know, assume that you are going to a restaurant, okay? A restaurant for your first date. And mostly, mostly, depending on the caliber, you know, of that person, they may invite you to an upscale restaurant. And in this stage of the game, I'm being real with you guys. You know I, I don't know any other way than to be real, okay? So you most likely will be going to an upscale restaurant in this stage of your game. And let me tell you why. Because you are a seasoned individual. I don't know how old you are, but I could tell you this. If you are taking my lectures, it's all about what? All about what? Being an upscale individual, looking your best, feeling your best, and propelling to being your most fabulous self. That means what? That means you will not be going to a dive restaurant on your first date, or any date for that matter. Um, I don't care how how much money you have or you don't have, you will you will not be going to a dive on a date. You will be going to a nice restaurant, um, a nice classy restaurant. It doesn't mean you have to order, you know, the thirty the thirty five dollar steak or, or or the sixty dollar lobster dish. It doesn't mean you have to order that. You could order, you know, a, a nice salad for fifteen dollars if you want to go cheap. You know what I mean? But you will be going to a very upscale restaurant. You you could order soup for for seven eight dollars um, and that be your meal I don't care I, I don't care what your budget is okay even if you have twenty five dollars and that's it you will find yourself at an upscale restaurant not a dive and you will eat soup and sparkling wine drink sparkling water and that's it for 25 bucks that enough said you are going to an upscale restaurant on your date that's it all right Okay, so if you're going to an upscale restaurant, you are to look your best. You are to look your best, meaning well-polished, classy, and sexy. That is different than you looking like a $2 tramped out hoe. And yes, I said a $2 tramped out hoe on my lecture video because I am real. You have to get exactly what I'm saying here and now because I don't want to mislead you in any way. I don't want you to assume that I'm talking about something that I'm not. When I say I want you to look sexy and classy, it means you are to wear a if you have a, a a thin little waist with a big booty and big boobs, good for you. I, I mean, what woman wouldn't want that, right? Great, good, wonderful. It doesn't mean you have to wear the tightest, tightest pants, okay, with, with, with heels and your butt crack showing and all your boobs, all the girls out. It doesn't mean you have to dress like a $2 hoe. What it means is that you wear a nice form-fitting, perhaps, dress. Very elegant dress. Very sexy dress. And still look well-polished and upscale. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. You have got to put your best foot forward. You have get you have got to put your best assets forward. If your boobs, if that's your assets, sure. I'm not saying to expose everything out there, but I'm just saying there has to be a nice little way that you could show that you've got great boobs without looking like a tramp, like you're about to throw them out at, at, at your date. I'm being real. 
appreciate it, okay? All right, uh, next thing is number six. I love doing, you know, the top 10 of everything. When I, when I write my books and my eBooks, it's always like, ooh, top 10 or top 15 or top this or top that, because I love to go in order of things. So next, now that you, you've looked, you know, you've dressed appropriately and accordingly for, for your date, the next thing is to act appropriately. So you want to act like a lady. You want to upscale. You want to act like you have some class, which you do. You want to act like it. Let me say it again. You have now dressed the part and look appropriately. You look classy, well-polished, and sexy. You are to act as such. I do not want you I do not want you acting like a dumb bimbo because you think that is the way to attract men and to get them to like you more. Let me say it again. A lot of beautiful women do just that. Okay? A lot of women think that in order to get the man to like them, or think they're hot and sexy. Ooh, they have to act like a bimbo. <laughs> oh gosh, really? Really? Yeah? Really? No, 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 no. The most sexy thing that you can be. Let me tell you what the most sexy is. Yes, it's sexy to have a, a little play toy. You know, you, you, you're cute and, and bubbly and, and that's, that's a little play toy. Sure, what man wouldn't want that for the night? Yes, I said it. What man wouldn't want that for the night? Perhaps two nights. Shoot, forget about it. That's a booty call. You know what a booty call is? Whenever he's feeling like he wants sex or something to that nature, he'll call him up. He's out with, you know, his real date. And his real date is, yeah, she's not putting out because she has some type of class, right? So he'll drop her off because they're not, they're not in a committed relationship yet. Midnight, he'll call the booty call at midnight. And he'll say, what are you doing? I miss you. Can I come over? And she goes, oh, he must really miss me. Oh, he must really like me. He's calling me. I was just out with his friends at a basketball game or something. And he's calling me because he missed me. Yes, come over. Yes, come over. Get real. That is called a booty call. You are a jump off if you're doing that. You know what a jump off is? A booty call. Somebody that they call when they want to have sex but that's all they want. They don't want anything else from you. They don't want a relationship with you or anything like that. It's called a booty call. Let, write that down. I need you to write that down. I need you to write that down. Booty call. So you want to act like you have class because you have class. And the sexiest thing ever is for this gorgeous, beautiful, well-dressed, polished, classy woman to have the looks and to have the brains. You are going to need to communicate with this person. The man is going to want you, yes, because you're beautiful, but also because you've got brains. That's a keeper. That is a keeper. If you just look good and you are a jump off, you are a, a, a booty call, that's all you are going to be. Nobody wants to be in a real relationship with that. That's just a sexual toy. You get tired of your little, of your little sex toys and you move on to another sex toy. Nobody want a real long-term relationship with a little sex toy. Beauty and brains act accordingly. Do not act as if you do not have common sense. 
Let me tell you something. As far as statistics, guess what? More women today, more women today are graduating from college than that of their male counterparts. In other words, there are more women graduating from college today than men. I know, I know sometimes we have to rub their egos. I know that. There's all, there's all this research, you know, on that in regards to some men. They need stroking now and then. They want to feel like real men. They want to be the one to provide. They, you know, they, they want to be the one in charge. They want to be the alpha male and you be the submissive woman. Blah, 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 blah. Times are changing. We are evolving as a nation and as a people. We are. More women today are graduating from college than that of their male counterparts. We, buy, we do uh, make less money on average. Yeah, women still only earn, some, some research says 79 cents, some, some research says 82 cents for every man dollar on average. We're closing the gap, not soon enough, but it, it's getting there, okay? All right, so act, act like a lady, Act like you got some sense. Act like you are classy and well-polished because you are. You are fabulous. Those old habits of how you used to act and how you used to behave is in the past. You no longer, you are no longer that person. You are no longer that person. That person with low self-esteem, you are not that person. That person who used to tolerate all the nonsense from their ex, for two years, two, three years, you were with this loser that you allowed to treat you like crap. You have surpassed that. That is in your past. You have healed yourself. You have taken all these personal development courses. You are no longer that person. You are fabulous. And you are going to tell the world and show the world how fabulous you are including your dates. Your dates will know how fabulous you are. You are going to step your game up. You are going to step up to the plate and come and present yourself as the fabulous individual that you are. You look good. You feel good. Everything about you is good. Your self-esteem is up. Your self-confidence is up. You know it. I know it. And everybody know it. Including the person you're sitting across the table from on your date. So don't you forget it. For some strange reason. If you still have issues with this concept. I want you to go and review my lecture on how to be an upscale single. And for some strange reason, if you haven't seen it yet, you need to take that class. Becoming an upscale single because that is who you were meant to be. That is who you are inside. You just have to know it and you just have to claim it. You are an upscale single. And if you've forgotten that, you need to take the class again and again and again. You could review these video lectures at any time, as long as you are a member of BevKnox.com. So I encourage you to watch it over and over and over until you get it. You are an upscale single. You are an upscale individual. Dress like it and act like it. Now, along with, along with acting like a lady and being well polished, sexy and, and classy, it is okay to be mysterious, okay? You, first of all, need to think. You need to think before you speak. 
Communication is key in any relationship, including the formation of a possible long-term relationship. How you speak and how you communicate on your date is key. It is key. Think before you speak. Talk. Laugh. Communicate. Appropriately. Do not divulge all your deepest and da darkest secrets to this stranger that you are getting to know, that you just met. Why would you want to do that? There are some people out there, they meet you the first day, and it's like they're an open book. They, they will tell this stranger, this stranger, all about their past their past history with men or women or, or their sexual history, their financial history. That is ridiculous. You are on a first date, maybe two, maybe three. You do not talk about these things when you just meet somebody. They are still a stranger, especially if it's your first date. You talk about very, you know, nonchalant, very superficial things. Some things you have to get out, you know, immediately on your first date. But before you even schedule the date, you should already know enough about that person to want to date them. For example, how many kids you have, you know, how many marriages or divorce, you know, where did you grow up, you know, how do you live, blah, 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 what, you know, what type of, you know, job do you have, what is your, you know, career path or blah, 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 blah. All right. All that's out of the way already when you're talking to them on the phone, getting to know them, and then you schedule the date. So you already know that stuff, right? So on the first date, really, you're just basically interviewing and you're you're te you're checking to see if there's any chemistry there usually it's physical chemistry you know do i find that person you know appealing or sexy oh my gosh you know you thinking right <clears throat> tmi too much information you do not want to go there you do not want to divulge too much information what kind of conversations then can you have? Beautiful, fun, light, easy going. Oh my gosh, I love this. Where have you been on vacation? Really? Me too. Oh, I, you know, I love the sand, you know. Your, your, fav your favorite concert was, was whom? What? Yeah. Collective Soul. By the way, I love Collective Soul. <laughs> yeah, I was at Collective Soul concert. Yes, I got the drumsticks from the drummer guy. I really did. He did call me up <laughs> after the concert. Oh, yeah, drumsticks. Um, really? Oh, my gosh. Movies? You love this? You love that? Very casual conversation. Don't get too deep. That is your first mistake. Do not get too deep in a convo because you could lose interest. They could lose interest in you like that. And they could say, oh, my gosh, she's such a fluke. She's such a floozy. I can't believe she is talking about her past sexual history with me on the first night. Does she talk about her sexual partners with everybody she goes on a date with? Oh my gosh, she is a jump off. Remember what that is, right? She is a like a booty call. I, I mm, Let me hurry up and end this date. Another thing. Another thing, some of us get loosed lips when we drink alcohol. So I am suggesting to you, if you want to have a glass of something, a glass of wine or a mojito or something like that, sure, that's totally fine, you know, relax you a little bit, but guess what? One glass. Maybe one and a half. You could sip on, on the other one, but space yourself out. That's it. That's it. Do not drink too much alcohol when you're out on a date, on a first date. 
Not only for, you know, my safety uh, reasons, and I'll keep, you know, going back to safety, 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 safety. I'll keep talking about safety all night long because to me that is key. To me that is key. Do not drink too much alcohol on a date. Not only will you look like a freaking alcohol because, alcoholic, because you will. Can you imagine down in shots, you know, and ooh, I can keep up with you. Let's go, let's go, let's go. What, what image do you think you would be presenting to this person? To this person who's looking for a spouse. To this gorgeous, upscale individual that you find so appealing and you wish that things would work out with him because you want to get to know him more, you want to date him, you want to be with him, right? Everything about him so far, you love, you like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And you present yourself to be something other than who you are, which is the most fabulous individual. You start drinking, and you know when folks start drinking, what happens? They start talking a little bit too much about inappropriate things. Really, really inappropriate things. They may behave in a manner that is inappropriate for a first date. They may probably start acting very sexualized towards this person. They may end up in a back seat or in a hotel having sex with this, with this person they met on the first night. Alcohol does that. You know this. You are a grown person. You are grown. You are very mature. And this may have already happened to you in your younger days and you don't want to go back there. So some people, even though they think, oh my gosh, I need a glass of, you know, so-and-so. I need a couple of a shot, something to relax me so I can get through this date because this person is just so intimidating and I don't want to mess up. Let me just have a glass of wine. Oh yes, waiter, bring me another. Woo, and you're down in it. Okay, not a good idea. Not a good idea. All right, one, one and a half, that's it. Never finish off the second one completely. All right, what do you order? Eat. It all depends on, you know, the cost of the restaurant and the budget. I mean, I'm pretty sure that, you know, whew, fine, let me go. Let me go to the next one, which is number eight, who pays? Let's talk about money, okay? Who pays? Well, again, my rule of thumb is this. I know we live in a society where the man usually pays for the bill. And I don't see a problem with that. I really don't. But I just stated, I just stated that more women are graduating from college than that of their male counterparts. More women are working, have their own jobs, and have their own money. So I'm going to say to you, it all depends. Who pays? It all depends. First of all, it all depends. If you are making more money than the individual, I don't, I don't, I really do not see a problem with uh, women paying for dinner. I really do not. But you got to feel the man out. You have to feel the man out and you have to listen to what he's saying when he's talking to you on this date. So if the man is saying to you, I am so happy that you are here with me on this date. You know, I want you to go ahead and order anything you want. I want to make this night spectacular for you. I want you to enjoy it. Um, please order the lobster. You know, I want you to be happy. So if a man's talking that way, you, you should know, ding, 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 ding. Okay, this man has all intention of, you know, of splurging a little bit on this first date. And, and sure, I, I'm going to feel free to order the lobster and a glass of wine and, um, and he's going to pay for it. But just in case something happens, okay, I, I, I'm able to pay for it myself. 
I want you, I want you to have that thought. I want you to think that way. Sure, you know, he wants to splurge a little bit. He wants me to order a nice dinner. I'm going to order a nice dinner, but I'm not going to order the most expensive dinner because I'm a classy gal. I'm going to order something that's, you know, reasonably priced, um, and, but something that I'm going to enjoy, okay? Because I don't want to insult him um, by not ordering something that I'm going to enjoy. Because if he's telling me, I want to make this special, please, I want to splurge on you a little bit, order the lobster, and the lobster is a $60 dish. So if he's telling you, order a $60 dish, and you're like, I'll just have soup. I'll just have soup. It's $8. I'm okay with soup and a glass of wine. That That's not good. That's, in my opinion, that is not good. All right? You're going out to dinner. I don't want you to be a pig. I don't want you to have, you know, prime ribs all over your face or whatever. Unless you're going to a prime rib shack <laughs> for your first date. Okay? I want you to eat. I want you to have a good meal. Believe it or not, a lot of men love to see women eat. I know that, you know, standards of beauty vary. And other people may, you know, differ in their opinion about this topic than I, but I'm telling you, a lot of men love to see women eat. Not eat like this, but eat, eat. Or order the salmon, order this. Appetizer, sure, sure, eat. It's okay, eat. All right? He could pay if he is willing and able, and, and if he wants to, sure. But if you are the one who invited somebody on a date. Let's just say you were, you, you know, you were the one who initiated the date and, and you, know, you, you picked the restaurant and, and you went ahead and you did everything and, and you're like, yes, I would love to take you out and I want to take you to this restaurant, blah, blah, blah. They're, you love salmon? Great. They've got the best salmon, you know, so and so and so. I want you to be prepared to pay for dinner. I do, I really do. I want you to have your 200 bucks in your wallet or your credit card or what have you. And when he says, when he says, no, I got it, I got it. I want you to say no. I want you to say no, I invited you out. This will show what type of character you have, by the way, to him, okay? I want you to say, no, 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 please, please, please. I invited you out. You want to do it classy, and you want to do it fun, and you want to do it very feminine. No, 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 no. I invited you out. Please, please, please. Let me pay. Let me pay. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to buy you dinner. I really wanted to buy you dinner. They most likely will back down. They most likely will back down and allow you to play because it gives you pleasure to do this. It will give you pleasure to pay. And in the back of their minds, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, this is such a classy person. I've never had a woman come out like this and, you know, paid for this elaborate dinner and and, you know, insisted on it and blah, 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 blah. Because in the back of their mind, they're like, oh my gosh, not only is she sexy, she is beautiful, she is classy, and she could afford to buy me dinner. <laughs> she could afford to buy me dinner. Win-win situation going on, right? Win-win situation. Can't beat that. Cannot beat that. All right. So we're done with who pays. Now let's move on. Number nine. Be realistic about the date, the situation, and possible outcomes. Be realistic about the date. Okay? So, you know, you are in your interviewing process. You're having a good time with this person. Okay? And you're actually, you've been on this date for two hours. Oh, my. And, um, you know, when you're talking to this person and this person is saying some things that perhaps you would consider red flags. Okay. You're not really sure yet because you have to, you know, 
evaluate this person a little bit more but thus far you've gotten you've gotten some red flags so you may casually uh bring it up again in, in conversation and um and pretty much you know these red flags are a concern to you okay they are of concern so you really have to be realistic about it and not just sweep it underneath the rug because this person is gorgeous okay sitting in front of you and you probably you know want to go out, go out on another date with them you're pretty much going to pretty much forget about these red flags you can't do that you have to be realistic you are on a mission you are on a mission you are dating in, which is your interviewing process to find your potential mate slash partner that's what you are doing you've got a goal you've got a goal in mind and our next class is all about goal setting for your future okay so I'll get to that then but you have got a goal in mind you have got an objective you've got you have got a plan you have got a plan so be realistic if this person does not meet your criteria don't forget you look good you are fabulous and you are picky you are not just going to settle for anybody just because they asked you out on a date and just because you went out on a date with them so if this person that you are on a date with have you just found out on the day that this person has seven minor children with six different women <laughs> i know i i know it appears that i'm going to the extreme okay but it happens it happens okay so this person looks good is fabulous you know is very you know charismatic and and very you know everything else is great about this person they're you know they're financially stable gotta have a great job you know the whole nine yards have have a, a summer house in the hamptons <laughs> everything else is is great about this person but you find out that they have seven children by six different women and they're only 48 they're 48 years old and they've got seven kids six different women and they're all minors deal breaker it's a deal breaker for you it would definitely be a deal breaker for me too who wants to deal with that that means six six baby mamas this person has six different women that you are going to have to deal with you don't want to deal with that that's too much drama six baby mamas they're all underneath uh, all under the age of 18 that means he's got to shell out a whole bunch of child support <laughs> let's face it right let's face it so that glamorous life you thought that you perhaps would have with this person because he presented himself to be all that and wonderful and you know this and that and he you know he very well maybe that's why he has so many kids right right but that is a deal breaker for you because you have goals okay in your life and there are certain things in your life that you want to do and accomplish with your partner and it does not include baby mama drama from six different women it does not include baby mama drama in fact in fact i will go as far as to say the moment in your interviewing process with your various different dates that you're going to have the moment you get a hint that there is any baby mama drama going on i mean we're grown and there there's they're most likely going to be ex-wives and, and 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 children you know involved in a situation and i'm not saying you know run away from a man who who has an ex-wife and and a child or children i'm not saying that at all okay in fact that could be very appealing knowing that this person already has kids especially if you don't want to have any <laughs> Especially if you don't want to have any um, any children because you have your own or you just don't want any. That, that's your deal. So that situation may be appealing to you if they have N, N meaning one, ex-wife to the max. That's it. That's your cutoff point. 
but the moment you hear about baby mama drama, and it really is just what it means, in case you don't know what baby mama drama is, and I think you know what baby mama drama is, baby mama drama. There's drama going on with your past relationships that, you know, you, you have children with. And usually, most likely, it's always about financial issues and about child visitation issues. Bada bing, that's it. You don't want to be involved in situations like that. You are to run. That is my advice to you. If there's baby mama drama going on, I want you to exit. I want you to run. So being realistic here, being realistic about the date, if indeed there's all these red flags going up, I don't want you to make excuses for these red flags. I want you to see it as it is, okay? And I want you to evaluate the situation. If you have questions about these red flag situations, I want you to ask. I don't want you just to sit tight-lipped and, you know, pretend it doesn't exist. I want you to ask. And if it's too personal, if it's too much of a personal issue or topic, then your date would say, you know what, that's really a personal issue and I don't, you know, right now we're just, it's the first date. I don't want to divulge that information. And you have to respect that. Because you don't, you're not, you don't want to tell all your, you know, issues firsthand right away either. So if they don't want to talk about it, you have to respect it, but you have to have enough wisdom to know that, oh my gosh, there may be something, you know, on a deeper level going on that I, I may not want to partake of. So in that instance, you're being very realistic about the relationship, the situation, the date, whatever you want to call it. And then you, you need to move on. You need to move on. But let us pretend that there isn't any red flags, okay? Um, this is a red flag situation I just talked about, but let's just pretend that the date went fabulous. The date went great. The date, the date was just so, so wonderful. And you guys ended the date, you know, with a casual hug and maybe a kiss on the cheek. That's it. Let me say it again. I don't care if you were at, you know, this dinner and you are just vibing and you had your glass of wine and, you know, you guys went out dancing after and the music was just so good and you had another glass of wine and you, you were dancing a little bit sexy on the dance floor. We've all had those moments, right? I could hear the music now. I could see it. Woo! You are dancing on the dance floor and you are so sexy. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. You are not. You are not to take it any further than dancing sexy on the dance floor. That's it. When the date is over, you thank your date and you, you could give your date a hug. I, I don't mind that. And you are allowed to give your date a kiss. You know, I, don't, I mean, a little peck. Okay, fine, a little peck. But I don't, I don't even want you to peck the person. I want, you, I want the person to give you a kiss on the cheek. That's it. They give you a, a kiss on the cheek. That's it. I think probably at this point, shaking hands, that's too, that's too casual or business-like. A little hug or, you know, it's, I'm a huggy person. I'm a, I'm a happy go <laughs> lucky. I'm a hugger. Sure, I would, I would hug the person. And thank you so much. I had a great time. I had a great time. Okay, I I'll talk to you soon. When you say, I'll talk to you soon, okay, notice how that was a very casual ending because I really, really want you not to commit anything do not make a commitment for a second date or anything more unless you've, you know, gone home and you really evaluate the situation and, um, and you really process what went down um, on, on this first date, okay? So do not make a commitment uh, on at the end of your first date. Not only will it make you look really, really desperate, but it will also make you look anxious, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, let me lock this in now. I, so again, I do not want you to lock in anything after the first date. I do not want you to even mention a second date. You could say something very casually, like, oh my gosh, I had such a great time. Thank you so much. 
okay, I'll talk to you soon though, okay, sure. And the person may say, well, yeah, it would be nice if we could do something again. And you do, you leave it very casually and you say, sure, that would be great. Sure, I'll talk to you soon, okay. And that's it. And that's it. And you get in your car or you get into a cab or what have you and then you go your own way. You do not go to the hotel with this person or back to their house or take them to your house or anything like that. The moment you have casual sex on the first date, you're done. It's over. 99% of the time. You always have, you know, some some people who sleep with people on the first date and, and they end up getting married or whatever. Slim to none. Do not have sex on the first date. Should I say it again? Should I repeat myself? Do not have sex on any kind of sex. Okay? Because right now you're like, hmm, what is she talking about? You know, what kind of sex? There's so many different kinds. Any kind of sex. The, uh, the only thing you are to do with that person is you are to give them a, a, a nice hug and you are to thank them and they are allowed to kiss you on your cheek. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. Nothing else. All right. Um, so again, you don't want to appear too anxious and try to you know lock in that second date or anything um don't forget i mean you are you are a, a creature of beauty you are absolutely fabulous of course he's gonna want a second date of course he's gonna want to date you again but you have to be selective and i want you to go and evaluate and reevaluate you know the date and process it in your mind and then you decide whether or not you want a second date with this person now, we're getting to the juicy part about how long should you wait before you contact this person? Look, there are old school rules about this. There are old school rules that say to you, you know what, don't talk, don't call them or anything for two to three days, blah, 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 blah. See, I, I'm not with that. I, I'm really, really not with that. Let me tell you what I'm with. Let me tell you what I suggest you do. If you really, really had a good time and you really, really want to see that person again, do the following. At the end of the first date, again, be playful and bubbly and joyful and thank them. I had such a great time. I will talk to you soon. Oh my gosh, give me a hug. Yes, I will talk to you soon, okay? Don't lock in anything and walk away smiling. And you smile and you walk away. Dazzle them and you walk away. A couple hours later, depending on what time, by the way, depending on what time, Let's, let's pretend, you know, it was like maybe 10 o'clock you walked away because you guys met up at, at 7 at a restaurant or something like that. You're, you're home. You're, 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 no, let's pretend it's 9 o'clock you walked away because I don't want to be too tacky here. You got home and you're relaxed. I would say about an hour later, an hour later, the exact same day, you send a thank you text. You do not call on the phone, you do not email, you do not do any of that stuff. You use your burner phone <laughs> like I taught you to get. And you send a thank you text. Once again, I had a great time, I just wanted to thank you. I'll talk to you soon. That's what you do, that's it. Do not wait two, three, four days to contact the person. Do not do that. Why? Because. Men are insecure just like women. Everybody have their own insecurities. And to play that waiting game, first of all, it's a game and I don't like playing games. I like strategy, okay, not games. All right? To play that waiting game, the guy could think, oh my gosh, she's really not into me. Because if she was into me, she would have either, you know, scheduled something with me or called me or this or that or what have you. I don't want you to play games. 
I want you to be strategic about it. And if you are interested in that person, send them a thank you text because you are a classy individual. You are fabulous. And you will get the second date. You will get the second date. If the guy beats you to it and texts you, just do a nice casual reply. Do a nice casual reply, nothing heavy. If you get heavy, too soon and you're heavy with your convo or heavy with your physicality or any of that heavy stuff, you will lose the person. You will lose them. You're done. That's it. You're done. That's it. Woo wee. And I'm going to leave you here because, you know, this, this class is all about, you know, dating 101, the do's, the don'ts, what do you do on a date? And I just broke it down to you. Anything else after this point is in another class. Anything else after this point is in another class. But I just want to leave you by saying that if, if indeed you have missed any part of this course, what I encourage everybody to do is rewatch it over and over and over and over. Rewatch this lecture over and over and over because something that may not have clicked the first, you know, the first or second time, guess what? It will click. It will click. And in order for you to retain information, because this whole dating process, you're not going to learn it the first view or the second view. You are not. You have to rehearse it in your mind over and over and over in order for it to stick to your long-term memory. You have to rehearse it over and over. So either keep reviewing this, you know, this uh, video lecture over and over, or you could get headphones and you could, you know, play it on your phone. Sure, you could watch my videos on your phone and you could just lay your phone down. You don't even have to, you know, watch it, but you could just listen to the techniques, listen to the strategy, listen to it and retain the information via auditory. Absolutely. Absolutely. You are fabulous. Remember that. You are fabulous. You are wonderful. You are unleashing your most fabulous self. You are not desperate. You are picky. You are well informed. You know what you want and you are going to go out there and you are going to get it. You are going to be proactive and you are going to take action and you are going to get exactly what you want. You may have to have a little patience, but you are going to get it nevertheless. I am so, so proud of you. I am so proud of you. I am so proud. I mean, we, we met when you had, when you had low self-esteem. Now look at you. Look at you. Oh, you have dazzled me. And I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it there. You, you have dazzled me. I, I'm proud. I'm happy. Now, a lot of you guys are going to need personal coaching services in regards to dating. What I want you to do, of course, after you've reviewed this video lecture over and over and over again, I then want you to schedule personal coaching with me. And I will work with you one-on-one -on -one in regards to the areas that you need the most assistance. I will work with you one-on-one -on -one and guide you and assist you with your dating process. Okay? You could have me on speed dial. A lot of my clients, they call me up and they're talking to me. Oh, Pam, what should I do? What do you think I should do? What do I think I should do? And we are talking. We are talking about their own personal dating process. I will do that for you too. Okay? So go ahead and uh, schedule an appointment with me and I would love to work with you. This is Dr. Bev Knox from BevKnox.com and BevKnoxFabulous.com wishing you the most fabulous day and date.